You're about to descend, and you're coming into the airport, and then you ask, how do you know what runway to land? What happens if I land on the wrong side? And most of all, why is it considered the correct or the wrong side of the runway? Yo, what's up? My name is Manuel, and welcome to this channel. This channel is all about aviation, so if you're passionate about it, Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell because I publish every day and you won't miss any of them if you subscribe. So with all that said and done, let's get into it. So let's first of all define the runway code, code marks. You have the touchdown zone, the threshold marks, and also the aiming point, which are the big rectangles, which are the also considered the thousand foot marks, markers. And they are basically, obviously, around 1,000 feet after the runway threshold. But we're not going to focus on that. That's another topic. The, the runway marks I'm gonna, we're going to focus on is are the numbers. You see, because in every runway, you see two big numbers. And sometimes with a letter and sometimes not. We'll, t we'll tell you that why. But you see two big numbers. There are always two, uh, sometimes with a zero but you always see two. And if you wonder what are those numbers for, and those, those numbers represent the heading. But what do I mean by that? Because in order to get a perspective, uh, the heading is the direction the aircraft is going relative to the North Pole. In other words, if you're going north, it's zero degrees. We use degrees for that. And if you go east, it's 90 degrees, south is 180, and so on and so forth, until you reach north at 360 degrees, also considered zero degrees. But anyways, and so uh, those two numbers, they are basically the direction that the runway is going. In other words, the, the direction the aircraft is taking off for landing, but... But it's rounded up with the first two numbers. It is not rounded up in the in the last two numbers, the first two numbers. For example, if the runway is facing 048, heading 048, which is around north, northeast, somewhere around that, a little toward the north. And if if you're going to if the runway is at 048, then in order to round it up, the the airport manufacturers or the airport architect or whoever designs the, the runways and he he basically rounds it up to runway zero five that's how they're called runway zero five because obviously anything bigger than five is is considered a uh, roundup so that is why it's called zero uh, runway zero five another example if the runway is facing uh two seven one then uh, the airport uh, makers, <laughs> the airport makers round it up to two seven to runway two seven, so understood, good, but oh I heard your question sorry, but what if there are two parallel runways in other words two runways facing this the same direction how are you gonna define them both if they're supposedly gonna be the same heading, well. That is where the letters come in, and we, but surprisingly for you, <laughs> it, it, we use actually just three letters, three letters, R, L, and C, uh, which uh, or R represents right, and L you already guessed it, left, <laughs> and C it's center, and it obviously depends if there are only two run two parallel runways, we use right and left. And I mean, it's by the other way around, it's right and left. <laughs> I have left and right issues, but <laughs> I apologize. And if there are also three parallel runways, such as in Seattle is a good example. And we use in the middle one, um, the center. We use in center, right. No, right, center, left. <laughs> and, but what if there are actually four parallel runways? Well, how are you going to define which one is the center one? Well, it's actually pretty simple. We don't define any center runway. We just assigned a left and right 
to two other runways, but we just change the number. Do we up that up the number or lower the number? A good example is in is in LA. In LA, you have runways two five left and right and two four left and right, uh, facing towards the Pacific, and obviously the reciprocal runways. And what you have to, what you have to know is that uh, the the actual heading of all four run all the four runways is two five one. I've memorized it, <laughs> and it's two five one. So two five left and right should be the most accurate, and but why do you call it two four left and right in the other ones? Well, it's only to define them. It's only to define which one's the difference between one and the other one, and and obviously for communication with ATC and obviously for simplicity. But what about the reciprocal runways? Well, it's the same story. We just define the runway heading. We just cal obviously calculate it using a compass, and then we, I mean, sorry, measure it, and then we round it up, and here you go. In LA, it's two five right and zero seven left. Those are the two reciprocals, and, oh, and another way is to obviously, um, sub uh, subtract or add one eighty one hundred eighty degrees. If you wanna subscribe subtract, it is because the the number you already have is bigger than one eighty. If you wanna add, it's because the the heading you already have is less than one eighty, which is pretty straightforward and not really an explanation for that. <laughs> so we have already defined the runway markings, especially uh, particularly the uh, the numbers which represent the heading, but. How does this relate to which one you're about to use? Like, it doesn't answer my question. Well, okay, calm down, calm down. Um, after that, we're just going to talk about wind. And that is everything starts to connect. Wind is the natural forces the sun causes. And if you're flying, you might have a headwind, which is uh, the wind facing towards you and making you a little slow. A tailwind, uh, the wind coming from the tail, from the back, making you uh, a little faster, uh, with quotation marks, and crosswind, which is coming from the side or the other one, uh, right, uh, right or left. And what you have to know about, especially the headwind and the crosswind, is that the headwind basically makes the aircraft slower. But what do I mean slower? Well, it's just that... This is all relative because in, in reality, we should be measuring the aircraft with air, with the air. But in this case, we're going to use the ground because that is where if we're about to land, that is what we need. The uh, it's needed to be the most efficient landing or in terms of performance is to use as less runway as possible. And in other words, if we have wind, and the headwind, especially, makes the aircraft slower relative to the ground. And therefore, you need less energy to have the same airspeed. So you can still have, uh, you can still go to 140 knots at, at, at a slower ground speed. You can still go at 140 knots while you're going at 100 uh 20 knots at the ground you can still go that and go that way because of the wind and that is really efficient because when you actually land you're not landing at 140 knots you're landing at 120 knots because 100 120 knots is the ground speed and you're gonna slow down as fast as possible so that is where you need to decide which runway you're about to use if the, if the runway you're about to land has a tailwind, you're gonna need, um, you're gonna need more energy to have the same airspeed, and therefore, the ground speed is faster than it should, and you're gonna need more runway, which is more inefficient, and obviously more risky. So, that is where the wind comes in to the decision of the runway. You need to check the 
Oh no, that's sorry. I'm sorry. That's gonna, that's a spoiler for the next part of the video. But you need to know uh, where the wind comes from, and from that you're gonna. Uh, go to the runway, which has the the closest as possible uh, to for a headwind. Um, it has to be especially a strong one. Obviously not gusty. <laughs> if it's gusty, you're you're, uh, you're in trouble. But uh, it has to be a, a headwind, so it can be as efficient as possible. As I said. So after that, I I I hear you. I hear your questions. I hear them, and I'm gonna answer some of them. Uh, if you have if you have more of them that, that I didn't answer, let me know in the comment section. Uh, I really appreciate them to to answer, and it's also really helpful for you to know and not confuse any aviation terms or practices. So, I really appreciate that. So here's the first question: How do I know what the wind direction is? Like, how how do I know? Is it just a weather forecast from my phone or? Is it a little more? Well, uh, the weather is probably a extremely important factor, like extremely important factor in aviation in every single airport. So it shouldn't be a surprise at all that the airport itself has a weather system, a weather sy a weather system that that measures each. Uh, from the pressure towards the wind direction, the wind direction and speed, obviously, and the temperature, the dew point, and a uh, lots of other stuff that maybe you haven't even heard, but it it calc it measures all that stuff for the pilots which actually need it, and but for starters, there and there is actually uh, a wind suck. That's how they call it, a wind suck that's next to the runway. And it is basically a little flag, in this, in the, mostly in the shape of a sock. And it's, it's a little flag that obviously, uh, if, if it's pointing towards the runway that you're about to land, then it's a headwind. If it's pointing away, then it's obviously a tailwind, which is pretty straightforward. And you can see them from above if you're at a general aviation aircraft, if you're especially in a small Cessna aircraft. But those wind socks are mostly for taxiing to take off and for VFR flights. But what about IFR flights? And what about if you're about if you're about to land? Well, you obviously use ATC air traffic control. Use ATC uh, communicates the weather forecasts from the weather measurement system. There has to be a name. I don't know, but. And the the airport makes up for them, and ATC communicates to them, and what what it, and the communication is called automatic terminal information service, ATIS for short. You might have heard of it, but it it basically read ba reads back everything, every information coded, to, to the pilots, and they have information such as the pressure, which is also important, uh, the wind, which is important in this video and and and, and the runway decision the runways in use which I'll talk about it later and the temperature the time it was uh, so yeah you get the point it basically tells you a lot of information but what if you're actually out of range from any air traffic control communications uh, from the airport you're landing well, you actually use the altern the alternative way, or uh, also consider a, an official way, which is called the meteorology. I mean, um, let me just pronounce it right. The meteorology. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the meteorological aerodrome report, which is METAR in short. The METAR is basically what air traffic control reads back towards uh, the ATIS. And it obviously does, and it, it doesn't include the runways in use, but it includes the most important things, uh, such as the wind and the weather, basically. The weather, which is why it's the meteorological comes from. And, and yeah, this is the alternative way to know which aircraft you're about to, I mean, sorry, which runway you're about to land. But another question is, what if there's a crosswind? Well, um, if the airport has 
uh, a, another runway that's ha that happens to be facing towards the the wind that happens to be a crosswind in the other runway, well, just go for it. It's pretty straightforward. But you might say my airport I'm about, I'm about to land doesn't have any do doesn't have only has one runway, and I have no other choice. And yes, you're right. You have no other choice. You have no other choice. To, but to make a crosswing maneuver, which I already covered in, in this video. Whatever sign, I, I think I made it right, but anyways. Um, and so yeah, you have another choice to execute a crosswing landing, but you have to be careful because if the, if the crosswind or the wind that happens to be a crosswind, <laughs> whatever, is really, really strong, stronger than the aircraft limit, which you find it in the manual, well, you have no other choice but to go to the alternate airport. I'm really sorry to tell you this, but it's for safety purposes and also for you not to crash and also for the families from the passengers to sue the airlines or whatever, whatever consequences there might be. But just don't risk it if the if the wind, the crosswind is stronger than the capacities. So last question. Why does ATC sometimes instruct me to land at a runway that's not ideal, depending obviously on the wind? Well, well, I mean, first of all, you have to know that ATC normally chooses which runways are in use, and it is mostly depending on the wind again. But there are times that even the ideal runway just something that had just happened, something happened to it. Like I don't know. Uh, a tire broke off from uh, from an aircraft that was taking off and they had to close it and and yeah it's obviously it uh, it's it's really bad and and we all and we all hate it trust me and but those are incidents and we can't control it so so yeah that's one of the reasons so maintenance it could also be yeah, it's mostly maintenance, which is, uh, which it could be repainting the runway, or, f sorry, <laughs> it could be, um, uh, some debris that fell off, I don't know, anything, and another reason is that there's, there's, there's not really any reason that you must land at, at, a, at a headwind, it's just that the runway is already really long, and especially if you're at sea level, if you're landing at sea level, and it's it doesn't really matter like <laughs> you you don't have to worry about landing at a one knot headwind if if you could easily land at a one knot tailwind with barely any difference so <laughs> sometimes atc makes these decisions which they they actually logical but it's mostly because it's still considered safe and you don't have to worry about it so that's it I hope you enjoyed this video, and since to, since I publish every day, so tomorrow is a new topic, so make sure you hit the subscribe button, and with all that said and done, we'll see you on the next video. Happy flying.